The funny thing is that repeatedly he had planned to visit us, but Satan was opposed to it. I don't know what happened. I think uh, the demons went on strike and allowed him to come. Give gifts here. I'm sure you know more than I know. Our, past, our governor is also a pastor. And he pastors the state. Therefore, God cannot allow our enemies to come on a day like this. Remember, the last but one commissioner of police in New York, I gave them money to build a police chapel. Please, policemen don't give account in Nigeria. They don't give receipt. They don't give account. But that man gave account of the money I gave him. And I said to him, for giving his account, you're the next IG. <laughs> you know he became the next IG. This one, the present commissioner of police just loves me and gives tithes that even our members do not give. For the first time in my life, I saw a policeman who can give a tithe of 500,000. I have done business with policemen for 26 years. They don't give account, they don't give receipt. They don't pay their tithe. But this one, pays his own. So I said to him, as you leave with you, you're the next IG. AIG. You know he has become the AIG. The prophet in this house must be a blessing to you. I don't want you to worry about people planning to attack Nigeria. We also have our policemen outside. Eh? If they want trouble, give them trouble. <laughs> Some of us were part of the Biafran War. No, I will not talk about it. But all I want is relax. Nothing will happen to you. In fact, if you look, if you look outside from here, you will see the result of what we have done. The police are all over the place armed, and we have to increase the number of bullets that we carry. Huh? Anybody who wants trouble will give him trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing is we serve an awesome God his own soldiers are also keeping watch over there you are important to him he will not allow nobody. if anybody wants to attack Nigeria they can't begin from you that's the wrong place to begin huh? I don't know whether you heard when, they, when I'm robbers robbed with you and the governor called me and the commissioner called me. I told the two of them, in two hours' time, everyone who stole will bring back what he stole. And when the thieves began to return what they stole, the commissioner gave me, hey, I won't tell you how much. <laughs> he asked me whether I am a human being or a spirit. Let's not discuss that. This is a night of great miracle. Yeah. Whatever you have been asking God to say a song of praise. So let's say to God, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. 
I want you to learn how to sing 
and recognize the peculiar concentrated presence of God in the midst of a good worship. Men, you, men who see the invisible, the invisible presence of God shall receive the impossible. Do you know how I went to pray where there was no church? Only the building. Only the building. My heart bleeds when some of you walk past that gate and you refuse to recognize this is the house of the Lord. It doesn't require this place being filled every day. You can come alone to this empty building and you meet God livingly. In 1970, I was reading my Bible and I read where the Bible says that same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. And I asked God, how come I have not seen him if it's the same? So I said to myself, I'll turn my room into a, a church building. I'll cry until God visits me. I will not eat, I will not sleep, I'll be on my knees. Young as I was, do you know this God appeared? There was this luminous density, light that was incomprehensible. And God said to me, Omar, I'm going to send you across the world with one message, that same Jesus, the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the light went off. Yes. <laughs> I want you to tell yourself this night, any day you walk through that door, tell yourself, I am stepping into the house of the Lord. We have been here for very many years. We have done nothing here but lift up the name of this awesomely awesome God. Even right where you are, when God turned the Red Sea around, he used his presence he said, no soldier. Only his presence dried up the Red Sea. And that presence is here with us. Whatever is your problem shall become your promotion. Yeah. That thing that won't let you rejoice and say, I am God's child, shall be taken out of your way. Yeah. Those who mock you will now celebrate you. And I went on my knees and said to the pastor who was also my spiritual father, Daddy, you want a small boy like me to preach? He said, you are not a small boy before God. I've watched you fast and pray. I've watched you fast and pray six times a day. This God will use you. Just recognize his presence and hear his voice, and pick his direction and instruction. This church shall be turned up sometime today. I picked the microphone, and went from song to song, people feel under anointing. <laughs> I said to God, so you don't care whether I am small or big, right where you are. This God doesn't care about what distracts you. That voice that says you are not good enough for your destiny is a lie. You are good enough for what God has for you. Yeah. That nobody great can emerge from your family is a lie. By my spoken word tonight, you are already a great man. Then yeah. I began to preach. And miracles began to happen. Some members of the church said I used, that I used to put my hand in my pocket because that's where my juju was. Juju does not carry juju. <laughs> the reason why God directed you to this hall shall be provided it shall be given to you. 
all those who are blocking your way that are just wasting their time. When power meets with power, the lesser power will bow to the greater power. Let's go. Bring her to Babylon and bring her to pain. Before we commence, write down somewhere in your notebook. God will never allow your pain and your brokenness to go unrecognized. Have you ever cried because of your difficulties? Those tears shall touch the heart of God. That's what we call weeping prayer. Weeping prayer is you saying to God, Father, I can't put my words, I can't put my prayer in words. Let my tears speak for me. Nobody that loves you that can ignore your tears. Nobody. Nobody. In my many years of being married, only one day, my wife cried. I said to her, I'll do anything to stop you from crying again. Anything. The tears of a lover touches your heart. And it will also restore the heart of God. Hannah was like every other woman in Nigeria. She wanted what? A child. She wanted a child. But I don't know what you want very badly. Is there anybody that knows what he wants? Raise your hand. Let me see. You know what you want God to do for you. You know it. Are you sure? And if it is done for you tonight, will you rejoice? Then get ready. Get ready. <laughs> One of us, I won't mention her name. She is too quiet for me to announce her name. She, she came to me and said, my, my mother-in-law said I am a witch, that I have eaten all my children. And she said, I want to die because she said that. And I want to die in your house. Me? With the craze. Me too at the craze. Your punishment will be every year, one child. Every year, one child. She said, stop. If I get just pregnant, one pregnancy, I will submit myself to you as a daughter. Whatever a daughter can do for her father, I will do it for you. Men and brethren, it's now more than 20 years. This girl has saved my wife and I with great dedication and consecration. She goes to Lagos to buy me clothes and buy my wives. Even though she buys my wife better dresses, okay. She's my wife. When she wears it, uh, she's my wife. But do you know, for those 20 years, she has not stopped buying dresses for us and buying shoes and bringing me her titan offering. And God has honored her. I made her a permanent secretary. Right where you are this night. What is that need that makes you cry? What is it? A woman came to me all the way from the Port I mean, from Calabar. She said, I gave my life in one of your meetings 10 years ago. Since then, nobody had proposed to me. But tomorrow, I have decided to commit suicide and commit uh, fornication. If you want to suspend me, suspend me. I'm ready. I can't wait again. And I asked her, can you please slow down? Because tomorrow by 10 a.m., a man shall propose to you. She stopped, pondered, and looked at me and asked, what did you say? I said, tomorrow. She said, if a man proposes to me, Without TV marrying me, I'll give you a carton of, a crate of soft drinks, and I'll give you a goat. 
Father, you have heard her prayer. Answer and honor her in Jesus' name. Then the next morning, she called back to say, the young man who proposed to me is two years younger than me. I don't want to marry a young person. Madam, we didn't discuss his age. Can I have my can I have my goods? I know what in Tobo Membo. I mean, boy, your mammy, I know what in Jehovah. I mean, boy, your mammy, I know what in Tobo Membo. I mean, boy, your mammy, I mean, boy, your mammy, I mean, boy, your mammy, I know what in Jehovah. I mean, boy, your mammy, I mean, what in Tobo Membo. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy, your mommy, boy. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy. I know what they did, they're my master. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy. I know what they told me, boy. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy. I know what they told me, boy. I mean, boy, your mommy, boy.
<laughs> Somebody said to me, the only song you know how to sing is this one song. Can't you sing another one? There is no other song as good as that song. There is nobody like our God. The, the night of my wedding, my very first night, my wife said to me, somebody told her, people who marry into my family hardly have children. Ah, uh -uh. that, what does that mean? That means we may never have a child. What type of prophecy is that? And I lowered my voice and said to her, Madam, for saying what you have just said, your punishment will be this. Every year, one child. Every year, one child. When people tell you where you are going, it's not possible. Tell them you have already gone. <laughs> When I was looking for entry visa into America, I got to the embassy. They looked at my documents and said to me, your form 120 expired three years ago. Get out from here. I said to the waiter, I have done my send-off. They asked, what is send-off? I have given out my gift to all my friends and announced my entry into America. They said, not in this life. Get out from here. <laughs> I returned to you, locked my door, and I said to God, for one month, I will not preach. For one month, I will not eat. I want entry visa into America. You love me this much. What is difficult in giving me ordinary visa? I cried, locked my door. A month after, a letter was slipped through my door. I opened the letter. Do you know what I found? I was invited to speak in a world convention by a senator, a governor, and a pastor. Those of you who travel, you know the meaning. I now flew into Lagos again. They read my documents. And they said to me, you are too young to be invited by anybody to speak on a world stage. You are too young. You stole this letter. Get up. Hey, stop, sir. Anointing has nothing to do with age. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In your hour of need, heaven shall open. Yes. And God will bless you with wisdom and creativity and imagination. God will tell you what to say when your enemies are about to mock you. <laughs> I was surprised. The same visa officer said to me, yes, 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 my brother. Anointing had nothing to do with age. If you can say what I've just said now, you are the owner of this letter. We are going to give you what they call B1, B2 visa. B1, B2 visa is for rich men in dollars. Do you know, I didn't know the meaning until after 20 years. I was coming out of Canada with my wife and our last child. An officer saw me. I was wearing Babarega. He said to me, you can't be the owner of this visa. You're wearing breastplate. Breast spread. That shows you the poor man. Me? He said you. How can, how can you wear breastplate and be carrying such visa? It's not your own. This God, I will always love him. To a well, his officers walked up to the man and said to him, this man is our first class passenger, the wife first class passenger, the son first class passenger. Don't insult him. The man said, I am sorry. No, you don't say sorry to an African chief standing. Kneel down!
And this my girl and wife said to me, when you travel with me, I am a lady. Don't cause trouble. Be a gentleman. Madam, not with, not with these white people in church. They have no respect for us. At my age, they are, they are looking down on me. Do, do they know how much money I have? Some of the white men don't have such money. Oga, kneel down. He said, yes, sir. And he knelt down. Everybody began to laugh. <laughs> don't allow Satan to cheat you. He will not rob you of your right. No. If Satan tries to protest because you are a citizen of God's kingdom, Huh? The maker of heaven and earth is your father. <laughs> we were going to Canada through London. They say because we are Nigerians, we have to fly back to Nigeria and obtain entry visa into Canada. Not from London. They said you can't trust any Nigerian. They are all criminals. Hey, Oga, oh can you shut up your mouth? Can I see your ambassador? They led me to the ambassador's office. Okay, ambassador, why did they employ racists to insult people like us, senior passengers? I'll pull down this roof over your head if you don't give me visa now. Now, the man said, I beg, don't cause trouble. I'll give you visa as long as your passport is valid. I said, it's valid for five years. He said, no, you now have five years in three visa to Canada. What of my wife? She, no, I'll give her. Even though she's a quiet, humble woman, or girl, her Abraham is fighting for her. She's just, what will she, she, will she be fighting with me? No. Give her her own. He gave her her own. Hey, come. Give me back the money I paid for this visa. <laughs> my wife said, can you please stop? I'll give you the money. The, you give me the money I gave you, the craze. Let me give me back my money. When you know who you are, nobody will cheat you. Even Satan will leave you alone. The man gave me back uh, both my money and her money. Right where you are. Let's hear from Let's hear from this great woman. Let's hear from Hannah. Can we go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 1 through 10? And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My heart, even though she was looking for a miracle, she said her heart rejoices in the Lord. My no matter what you are going through, don't allow depression to set in. Rejoice in your God, your maker. Because he will fight for you. There is no problem he cannot turn into a promotion. He didn't hear me. What did I say? No problem. He cannot turn into a promotion. Uh -uh. You didn't say anything. Read on, sir. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord, my, in the Lord. All those who will sing his praise tonight, your horn shall be filled with oil and shall be, exalt, and shall be exalted. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. My mouth is what? Enlarged over my enemies. All those who are looking down on you, when I accepted to be a preacher, people mocked me and laughed at me and said I was an idiot. In fact, <coughs> a girl who was my classmate in Ogoni, in Kana County Council School, she was on a flight with me and I went to greet her. She said, get her from here. I thought we'd be a medical doctor a lawyer, an engineer. 
And now you're carrying Bible like an idiot. Get out. Don't talk to me. Every time I see you on television, I'll shut down the television. Oh, Father, can you please speak for me? Few months after, women are glow in in Abuja. They had a continental conference in Abuja with me as the main speaker. And this girl was in charge of my welfare. When I arrived at Abuja to assume the responsibility of speaking to that crowd, she came crying. She said, I'm sorry. When I don't know what came over me, I don't even know why I can't understand the simple message of salvation. Please forgive me. I have been asked to take good care of you, to see to your welfare, to make sure you eat on time and sleep well, to take care of you and your wife. Can you forgive me for how I insulted you some years ago? I, I told her you are forgiven. Right where you are this night, those who look down on you shall be called by God to save you. Nini medio ni na fubo. Nini medio ni na fubo ngadi nyanga. Nini medio ni na fubo ngadi nyanga. Nini medio ni na fubo. Nini medio. Nini medio. Chapter 1, verse 10. 
Yes. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. She wept so. The, the amazing lesson here is that she knew ways to take her problems to. I don't know why some people believe they have to kneel down to pray. No, you can pray even when you're lying down. You can pray while you're easing yourself. You can pray while you're cooking. You can live in the consciousness of the presence of God and discuss your pain and your problems with him. This Bible commands that we pray without ceasing. She knew where to go and pour out her heart. I, want, I don't know what her problem is. When I used to cry for anointing and unction, sorry, members of the building committee, are they here? Yes, sir. How much do you say you're looking for to complete the fashion school? Okay. How much? Did the man disappear? Huh? What did he say? Ask the name. Is he here? He's not here. Is he here? Uh, nobody from that committee can speak for us. Uh, how much have we given? How much have I given the the building committee last week? How much? Ten million. Ten million. How much do they need to complete the fashion school? We know. We want to know the amount, the money. Find out. I hear it's about one million something. Huh? Don't let me leave this compound without giving you that money. We want. No, when you don't want to give to us our project, I will bring the money. You didn't hear me. There are some people who don't care about what we are building. This God miraculously gave NUC commission to give us permission to build a university. It's not done in Nigeria. No bribe. People asked them to collect money from me and the man said no. It's a force of its kind. And therefore money will not stop us from completing that project. The new four floor hostel shall be completed. Yeah. Huh? Those who are happy to hear what you're hearing now. Yeah. Men and brethren, we serve a living God, and He is stupendously rich. We don't need to borrow or beg anybody for money to complete that building project. This God I preach shall supply. My, my brother who was in Gabon was sacked by his wife for being hopeless, hopelessly and wretchedly and stupidly poor. He married a smashingly gorgeously pretty girl, not knowing pretty girls are for rich men. Huh? If you don't have money as a young man and a, a pretty girl proposes to you, don't plead the blood of Jesus. And I told him, I preach an awesomely awesome God. He will make you rich. He asked me how. God has 250 million ways of solving one problem. I don't know the one he will take, but he will make you rich. After praying for him, the next day, we're driving through the streets of Gabon. The president of Gabon saw him, stopped, and asked him, who fitted this lamp to your, your, your motorcycle? He said, I did. I went to no school, but I have 
great creativity and imagination. And the president said to him, from now henceforth, when I travel as a president, you lead my convoy. So there is somebody here that will receive that favor. <laughs> Two months of following the president, he bought two cars and brought one to me in Uyo. <laughs> he said, I don't know what to have in your mouth. But your poor brother yesterday is not a rich man. I have two cars. He bought me Avenger. Beautiful car. I won't tell you what transpired after that. But I'm saying this to say, the God I preach will not allow poverty to humiliate you. Even if you don't believe it, he would still do it. That God is your God. How many knew where to go for her problems and her needs? When you walk through that our door, just know you're coming into the house of the Lord. This is not an, this is not a hotel. Or is it? We don't say granite here. We don't even say palm wine. We sell this awesomely awesome God. No, stand up and say to people, we don't sell palm wine here. We sell God and his presence and his power. I raise a song. I want you to know that song is an invitation that God cannot refuse. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody. She wanted a child but she knew where to go for that child. Whatever is Walking your life, making your life difficult and uncomfortable, and um, that shall be taken out of your way. Can, can we see Exodus chapter 3, verse 20 and 21? Let's make it faster. And I will give these people favor. Right where you are sitting. A, pro a promise hangs over your head. God says, I'll give you favor. Yeah. What? I'll give you favor. Yeah. What is favor? Favor is God begging you to tell him what you want him to do for you. Favor is God saying, everywhere and anywhere you go, you command attention. At your appearance, closed doors shall open. Every stone your enemy shall throw at you shall become your own stepping stone to greatness. I don't know whether you know when they threw the three Hebrew sons into boiling fire. The fire killed those who threw that God is your God. Amen. Those who are fighting you, heaven shall fight them. Amen. Let's move on to chapter 1. Let's take verse 11 of First Samuel. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no result come upon his head. Men and brethren, it's not enough to have children. You must disciple each child and make that child to love God and make that child to obey God and make that child to 
respects God. I said, I said to my children, I bought 10 buses for this fellowship with my own money. But they, those buses are no longer my own. They belong to God. If you drive them because your father bought them, God will punish you. Stay away. Eli was a very nice man, but the children were not. The day God killed those children, he didn't listen to the cries of Eli. That God has given you a child is not enough. That child must be groomed by you, trained by you, discipled by you. Do you know one of us? A great woman of honor had a child who was an armed robber and she did not care. On her way from Ogoja, armed robbers stopped them. Do you know who she saw? Her son. And shouted his name. Are you an armed robber? Don't laugh. Listen, why are you laughing? You make me angry. When, you make me happy when you laugh over some serious issue. When a woman's son is an armed robber, is that good news? Why are you laughing? You are mocking her. Don't put a curse upon yourself. Any unbelieving child in your house is a potential armed robber. Do you know that young man aimed his gun at the mother and killed her? Here in New York, when she shouted the boy's name, her friends shouted the boy's name also and asked him, are you an arm robber? And he aimed that gun at the women. They all shut up their mouth. When you have a child, please, 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 make sure that child falls in love with God. Disciple that child. Take care of that child. Hannah said to God, if you give me any child... I shall return that child to you. That is what all of us must do. My greatest pain in life is that most of our mothers are lawyers unto their children. They defend them. Even when they are wrong. They defend them. Even when they are on the wrong side of life. This night I'm going to ask you to repent. Don't let your own child kill you as an armed robber. It's a bad story. But is it possible? Huh? Is it possible? It's possible. They were coming back from Ogoja. She didn't know that her son was on the road that day as an armed robber. As they stopped their lorry, the young man jumped in with his gun. The mother shouted his name. And the boy got angry that the mother shouted his name. And he killed her. Can I declare that that will never happen to you? But I want to ask, is it possible it can happen to you? Can that happen to you? No, it can happen to you. Do you know your beautiful girl can become a harlot under your, under your watch? Your beautiful girl can become a harlot in your own house. While you're praying in this room, your son can be having sex in the next room. Is that possible? Hey, let's not act like lepers. A leper feels no pain. Hannah said to God, 
bless me with a child. I will dedicate that child to you. I'm going to present it at your feet. How many of us will make the same promise tonight and say to God, bless me with a child. Bless me with money. I use the money to save you. Bless me with a child. I'll, I'll train that child and grow that child and groom that child to save you. Those who can say it, can you stand up? Let me see you. Stand up quickly. Don't pretend to be reading a newspaper. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Lord, do something tangible in my life. Something reasonable in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life something wonderful in my life oh lord do something tangible in my life something reasonable in my life something wonderful in my life oh lord do something new in my life Something wonderful in my life, something tangible in my life. Whoa, Lord, do something new in my life, something reasonable in my life, something wonderful in my life. Oh, Lord. Let God touch you tonight. The most painful thing is to have. Do you know, you may be a church pastor, but your child may not be a member of your church. I don't know whether you know, even your child can plan and plot against you. And send armed robbers to your house. Hannah, let's, let's go to verse 11. What did Hannah say? And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunk? Put away thy wine from thee. Is that chapter 1 verse 11? No. And she vowed a vow. She, good, she vowed a said, vow. Wait, don't run. She vowed a vow. All of us, we must each vow a vow unto the Lord that any child he gives us we shall disciple that child and make that child a holy child and make that child a servant of God and let that child respect and celebrate God and let that child honor God and live a life of prayer and a life of holiness. I don't know whether you know life mocks us. When your child begins to have sex with the girl he wants to marry, do you know that girl will never trust him and he will never trust her? It will be a life of mistrust and suspicion. I don't know any demon as powerful as suspicion. When your wife suspects you, do you know she will even suspect your mother of having sex with you? I had a son in the Lord, a, 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 a bishop, married to a, a bank director. One day in my presence, the father of this bank director greeted her and hugged her. My son in the Lord, the husband, pulled me back and asked me, 
Daddy, can't you see? This man must have been sleeping with my wife. Once you have sex with anybody before marrying that person, you will never trust him or her. It's a terrible thing and a deadly thing and a bad thing. And there are so many Christians who are suffering this pain. They suspect everybody. They mistrust everybody. I have a prayer for you. That this night you do the right thing. That you may not go into such pain. When your husband says, I, I suspect you have been sleeping with your father. Is that good news? Men and brethren, every child in your house is your responsibility and duty and obligation to bring that child into the fear of the Lord. That means when you're in trouble, that child can support you with prayer. But when you're in trouble and you have not groomed your children, they'll mock you. They'll laugh at you. Do I have anybody this night who dedicate his or her child to the Lord? Now, just say to God, this child you gave me, I will take time to groom this child, to train this child, to disciple this child. All those who can say it, can you stand up before God? Stand before your father. Stand before your maker. Stand before your God. That ogre is still sitting. Are you trying to show me you're a big man? Father, as many as now stand before you, start a school for each one. Teach us how to disciple a child. How to make a child love you. Help us to turn every child you have given to us as one of us. Let our children love you and respect you and celebrate you and partner with us to do the work of the kingdom. Every child that mocks us in our attempt to save you Father, turn his or her heart around tonight. Yes. That child must save you. Yes. That child must love you. Yes. That child must be your disciple. Yes. That child must be your child. Yes. Let the miracle begin. Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Jesus said, the Yamami I'm in my mind, this song, I can't any young I came you. I'm in my mind, this song, I hallelujah. Jesus said, I am my man, this song, I can't have any young I came you. I'm in my song, Jesus said, I am my man, I am my Jesus, in your mamu, I got me so in a zone. I got all the gimbe image or rubble. Here, I got me so in a guy. Jesus, said in your mamu, I'm in my mind. This is
to invite whoever you know that wants a child. The God that preaches the God of miracles. Help me. The book of Exodus says none shall be barren. When God said it, he said it with a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion and a measure of authority. He said, none shall be barren. And this night I declare, none shall be barren. Yeah. Men and brethren, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. I don't care the name of the sickness. It does not matter. This night is the beginning of a great journey. If you're a woman looking for a child this night, right where you are standing, the hand that makes the impossible possible shall be upon you. The hand that made Jesus to walk on a water. <laughs> don't, don't ask me to try it. I just want to rejoice that he could walk on water. They gave him a few loaves of bread. This awesomely awesome God. The more they ate, the more the bread was multiplied. And he's your father. I don't care where you are standing tonight. There is a hand that shall turn your barrenness into fruitfulness. Maybe you are also here tonight and there is no business you do that prospers. You are always struggling. No, it's again the rule of the game. As a child of God, whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper. Raise up that hand and say to God, I dedicate this hand to you. Whatever I shall do with this hand shall prosper. Father, move from family to family. Move from person to person. All those who are asking you to bless them with children, let the miracle start now. Let it start. Let it start. Let it start. You made Mary to carry a child 
without having sex with anybody. <laughs> Only you can do it. All those who are tired of struggling, every business they try fails. Beginning tonight, the story shall change. Father, everyone who is crying, saying, God, don't pass me by. Let his miracle start now. Let it start. 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 Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. There are eight of you. You need that encounter with the power of God. He who is your God and Father shall meet you at the point of your need. There are eight of you. Eight of you. Whoever is fighting you is wasting his time. There are eight of you. Beginning tonight, your womb shall be fruitful. Yeah. Womb was not given to decorate you. It is to make you a mother. And by my spoken word tonight, you'll be a mother. Yeah. A mother. You'll be a mother. You'll be a mother. All those who are standing for sisters, in-laws, Father, honor them. Honor them. Whatever their sisters may be, whatever their in-laws may be. You remember I prayed for a woman in America from Nigeria. And you gave her triplets. And she had those triplets three times. Nine children. Do it for others. Father, move from person to person. Move from person. Wipe away tears. Father, wipe away tears. Arise and let the enemies be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. Now, the power will visit you. That's number Eight. two. How many? Number two. Number three. Number three. Remaining five. Remaining five. Father, there are five more. Any enemy fighting those five shall fight no more. Yeah. Whoever was crossed by anybody, anybody that somebody said to her, for not marrying me, you will not have a child. Now it is cancelled. It is cancelled. It is cancelled. It is cancelled. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, let your power arise. Let the enemies be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered. Be scattered. Thou power of God. In the name of Jesus, move. That's number six. Remaining two. two. That's number seven. Remaining one. That's number eight. That's number nine. That's number 10. Onyan we be aname keleki wo onu mu juru ne kele ebi gbe rendu foromo onu mu juru ne kele onyo ma de be ma aname keleki wo onu mu juru onyo ma na warrior ebi me rendu foromo 
shouting saying God don't pass us by wherever they are dear Lord let your peculiar concentrated presence wipe away their tears let this year be the year of answered prayer the year of bearing children the year of doing well in their businesses. Those two remaining. Father, let an angel be assigned to them. And let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move! Somebody help. That's number three. That's number four. That's number five. Plus the first Total number. Total number five. Sixteen. Sixteen. Father, whatever the enemy has stopped the parents of your children, they also shall not be stopped there. Anyone here whose father could not build a house, could not buy a car, it shall not be extended to anyone here. Father, let heaven open. Let blessings flow. Whatever your children shall lay their hand to do shall prosper. In their sleep, teach them what to do. What distinguishes a man from the next man is what he knows others do not know. Therefore, bless them with wisdom, with creativity, with imagination. And tonight, as we go to our respective homes, everyone shall be protected. No harm shall come to anyone. 
No enemy shall locate anyone. And Father, I have a great request this night. Let your children enjoy healing sleep. Healing sleep. Healing sleep. Thank you for being our God and maker. Nobody is good enough to be our enemy. And we shall not slander anybody. We shall not backbite anybody. We shall not tell lies against anybody. Father, protect our tongue. May we live a life that will make you happy. I declare everyone here the treasurer of his or her family. Next week, we shall repeat this service. I want God to turn your finances around. I want God to bless you with financial success. I want God to give you the miracle of surplus supplies. I want God to send your destiny helpers to help you. Raise up your hand. Take five minutes. Just thank the Lord. And tell him you love him. Then tell him you will always love him. Tell him you will serve him. You will also bring your children to love the Lord. Raise your hand and tell him. Every child he gives you shall be a child of God. You will start witnessing from your own house. Stay away from pride. Chairman, come and dismiss us. Let them give their second offering. What? Three vehicles. Father, there are three vehicles in my hand. If a, a confirmation and affirmation and attestation that no member of this fellowship shall retire without means of mobility. In their old age, they shall have a car to drive. In their old age, they shall have their own house to live in. Any voice that opposes what I've said shall be stopped. And wherever your children shall live, they shall be protected. Yeah. I also declare tonight, dear Lord, Nigeria shall not be attacked by anybody. Yeah. We don't owe anybody anything. We cannot surrender our indigenous 